Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now going to be talking health, and of course this is with regards to the pandemic. Fighting COVID-19 with herbal medicine. The Afe Babalala University yesterday put out, of course, a you know, celebration and a message saying that uh, they have been able to you know, um, put together a herbal medicine, a herbal drug, that works effectively in the fight against uh, COVID-19. It had been tried on a few people and you know, seemed to be very, very effective. Um, we're speaking this morning with Professor Olaposi Omotui, who's the Director of Research at Babalola University. Good morning, Prof. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for having us again this morning. All right, and uh, this, you know, should be good news, you know, seeing that we're dealing with a pandemic across the world. Uh, you know, over time, you know, I've spoken about Nigeria not being able to know exactly what the peculiarities of our COVID-19 situation, you know, is. But um, this is something that we should be celebrating, you know, seeing that more lives will be saved um, if, you know, this drug is fully approved and put to use. So kindly share with us, you know, a little bit about this herbal drug um, how was it put together and what did it take? Okay, good morning and uh, once again I thank you for, so much for having us. Um, it, there's a bit of history to all of this. About 60 to 65 percent of drugs you know that are very active against different kind of diseases in the world actually are from plants. So that they are directly from plant or they are modified from uh, uh, plant spirit scaffolds. So, um, for us, this is just like the Javu coming back to what always works. And I want to tell you that in 2019, when this happened, the founder of the university, Chief uh, Rehafe Babalola, felt it was going to be something very big and that the world would probably suffer if we do not quickly um, uh, address the situation. So, at that point, he assembled all of us and said, let us begin to look into plants as possible alternatives to what the West was doing at that particular time. The West was looking into synthetic drugs, looking into FDA-approved drugs, looking into vaccine development. He said, look, we, this is where we have strategic advantage, plants. So let's pick it up and begin to do some screening. And, of course, uh, what we did was not doing it like regular other people would do it, just make claims based on folkloric uh, use, that is to say, how people have been using these things prehistorically. He wanted us to deploy science to investigate the possible potencies and to be able to screen using specific uh, mechanisms uh, of uh, SARS-CoV-2 pathogenesis. So these were the things we put together for the screening protocols in the first place, and we were able to narrow 18 starting plants down to just about two. Out of the two, uh, one of them, because we didn't have the um, intention of carrying it forward, we quickly published uh, our findings. And that will be for Aframomum meleguata, for those who don't know, it is called Atari in Yoruba. This is one of the most you know, potent anti-SARS-CoV-2 uh, plants that I know, just before the, the recent one. Just about two weeks ago, five universities in America they came together and wanted to really, you know, show or to be sure that what we did in Africa a year earlier was right. And they came to the same conclusions, even better, that Atari, that is from Osea, is not only capable of taking care of SARS-CoV-2 in culture, but also could also do that for SARS-CoV-1. So if you have exposure to SARS-CoV-2 or SARS-CoV-1, you could use that. Now, we're now telling you that the one we have right now with the Braophyllum species is even more potent than that. And we are, you know, uh, I'm a biomedical scientist, so what I'm going to be doing basically is to use those instruments of science to uh, uh, probe into all of that. And that's exactly what we did. Okay, so, and so, uh, you know, when we share made with our us, you know, to map that, we felt it was uh, approvable. Yeah, you know, I, I just wanted, you know, to also get you to speak on this. The, you know, when, when we talk about COVID-19 vaccines, people, they always say, oh, it's 90%, you know, 95%, you know, effective, you know, in, in you know, dealing with the, with the virus. Um, is there any clarity on how effective um, of uh, this uh, particular drug is or this herbal uh, drug is? Thank you very much. Uh, that's a very good question. Yesterday, we were making presentations to NIMA. NIMA is Nigerian Institute for Medical Research probably the only uh, body in Nigeria that has the 
statutory responsibility to uh, you know try such claims out and to make very valid statements on innovations like this. So one of the things we presented to them was to make comparison between the cocktail and are being used right now, approved by WHO, in comparison with ours, that is, we are there. So if a uh, hundred people were put into uh, 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 trials from the current cocktails available right now, at the end of three weeks, only 35% will turn out negative, meaning that the virus would have been cleared by, I mean, in only 35 people out of 100. If you do, if you repeat the same experiment, probably under the same very closely or close condition with virusidin, the number is 85%. In three weeks? In three weeks. As a matter of fact, the time, the mean, the, the mean time, like, okay, let's say the median time, so clearance is seven days for us. So if you start taking virusidin today in seven days, you should test negative. So that's, that's fantastic. If this, of course, this, this are just this are just what we did by our own team. We are now saying, government people, please come. This is our submission. This is your facility. We'll just stand and watch. You try it. So it must have, we must have a very high level of confidence to tell them, do it. And of course, after five hours of serious drilling yesterday, all of us came to the same conclusion that this might be our best gateway to the world. Okay, so um, it's a brilliant, uh, you know, brilliant one. And everyone pretty excited because there's been the constant call that we should, you know, find homegrown solution for you know all of our problems and the health issue or the health sector is not also left out but can you kindly tell us if you know this herbal drug has actually met the scientific method uh the, the scientific process of course that's been recommended by the who okay okay thank you it's a very uh, important question i i will have to quickly say this that we at the university are not just teaching uh students but we are adopting what is called a functional education paradigm. Functional education in the sense that we look at the university as the fulcrum to solving societal problems. And now, uh, on, on this particular note, it's a uh, uh, health problem. And we are going to look at this solution from the scientific point of view. And in science, if you want to develop drug, and I have to quickly tell you a very important background. I was with Nagasaki University Therapeutic Innovation Center for years. We were developing drugs for Japanese government at that particular time. So I was in that team. Now, here, what we usually do is to look at what exactly is responsible for a particular disease. In this case, it is SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus. So the question next is, how does the virus gain entrance or entry into the host, which is human in this case, is there something we can do to block that from happening? That's one. Number two, if the virus has eventually gained entry into the host cell, that is human, is there something we can do to stop that virus from being able to process itself, to multiply itself? That's number two. If the virus eventually has the, you know, has the capacity to multiply itself, is there something that we can do to, moti to mitigate the effect on the human generally? So these were the three uh, pathways we were seriously uh, researching on, and that is the basis for which our herbal cure was actually uh, based, basically. Okay. Is there any clarity on whether this is effective regardless of the variant of COVID-19? Um, Omicron, Fluricron, whichever name, um, is, can we be sure that this is effective regardless of how COVID-19 transforms itself? I, I think that is the most important question that I think everyone should be asking now. And let me give you a bit of clarity. A lot of people started with hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, 
uh, what's the name of the Ram Desivia. One of the major problems with all of these drugs was that they were working mechanistically now on a particular aspect of the viral pathogenesis. Hers is different. Hers are working, I mean, is working rather, on four different pathogenic areas. When Omicron mutated, and I also have to add this very quickly, just yesterday, uh, a very high uh, impact photojournal accepted our work on Omicron. Uh, we immediately the Omicron gene, uh, genome was sequenced at the South African Institute. We quickly picked up that data and we used it to understand the functional importance of that of that mutation. Yeah. And we understood that it became a super binder with ACE2 and of course has the ability to evade immunity. Just now they are now reporting that, oh, it is true, what this guy said. That has just been accepted for publication just yesterday evening around 5 p.m. Now, it means that we are closely monitoring the evolution of this virus with time. And that the Omicron itself has mutations basically, I mean, in the area of H2 binding, which is, of course, important for uh, in invasion into the host cell. But ours even work beyond that. So if it becomes a super binder and it binds and it gets to the cell, we are waiting for it to want to make up what is called the viron. The viron are the new particles. Ours will block it. And just for emphasis, some of the people that have you know tested uh, our innovation uh, successfully actually had Delta variant. And there is no reason we will not be able to take care of Omicron, regardless of that, because ours is not just working as a monopharmacological agent, but as a polypharmacological agent. One plant able to inhibit different aspects of the pathogenesis. Okay. That's our thing. Okay, so but let's also begin to look at, you know, some other, um, I mean, in comparison, because uh, for those who are vaccinated, you hear that if you have taken the first dose, it does not um, prevent you from contracting the virus again. I mean, it's just the way of saying it would reduce the severity of the case. Is that also, you know, the same with, you know, the herbal drug that uh, your institution or your university has come up with? Okay, um, no. Uh, in terms of the fine details, no. And I will try to explain this for people who are not probably uh, scientists. When you take vaccine, there are two kinds. Uh, some of them can help you to raise what is called antibodies against that particular antigen, in this case, SARS-CoV-2. But the problem is, once the initial pathogen, which is the virus here, mutates, it's always very difficult for the antibodies to catch up. And that's the reason why people need booster doses and i don't know how long we're going to be taking so some have taken four already maybe we are going to eight before the end of the year that doesn't work like that what we what ours do basically is not to prevent in terms of the fine vaccine uh what, what is it called now vaccine how vaccine works no how else is when before you contract it it will help or prevent you from contracting because we have some of the components of our virus then and it's called an entry inhibitor. Entry inhibitor means that once you have our virus in your system, the virus cannot attach to your cell. And for those who have contracted it, we have some components in the virus then that will stop the virus from being able to multiply in your body. For those who already have contracted and the viruses are already multiplying, it will reduce the severity of your symptoms, meaning that you will not be able to go to ICU. You would not will probably need intubation. So are you saying that, and you know, the herbal drug is a cure? It's a cure. That's exactly what we're saying. It's a cure. And it can also be used prophylactically. Prophylactically means it can prevent from that, that from happening. Okay. Um, Professor, how uh, long, you know, and what would be the process uh, that is needed before it is, um, you know, fully approved and, um, you know, full production, you know, starts with uh, this drug? Thank you. There are, these are multi-process uh, 
uh, uh, things that happen. You know, you have to move from one stage to the other. But as we began to record this level of successes, we also began to attract very important partners, both national and international partners. And one of the things, and one of the national partners that I like, because I don't want to talk about the national partners, the national that I like is the NIMA. Because they have the responsibility to test, to validate any of these pharmaceutical innovation claims on behalf of the federal government. After making our presentation and our regular handshakes with them, they, are, they were very enthusiastic. And as at yesterday night, around 11, 11.30, the team that will eventually test them in their own laboratories were already having meeting because we were actually on um, a social platform where we could track what we were doing. All the necessary MOUs, MTAs are already, by this morning, I'm sure the two legal entities from the universities and, of course, NIMA will be signing some of these papers. So that means that in a month, we might actually be at a point where we are fully ready, not only for production and probably for shipment outside Nigeria, because this, I think it is the best, like one of them in NIMA said yesterday, very respected Dr. Chika, he said this might probably be Nigeria's you know, best food ever in, in terms of pharmaceutical innovation to the world. So I do not think it's going to be beyond this. And again, I will have to also tell you that immediately the results started coming in in the laboratory. The founder of the university, Jivarewa Havivarela, had also quickly uh, started putting uh, plans in place for commercialization. And that is in what is called the Upward Industrial Research Park. In that park, we have the AB Pharmaceuticals, in which I was instrument. I was there when the contracts for the acquisition of the equipment was signed. About five billion. That was why he signed out that particular day. I remember, and I, I can tell you right now, some of the pieces are, of these uh, machineries are already in Nigeria. So by the end of this month, I expect every of the components to be on site, and by February, all us are going to be on deck to make sure that the plants are put are, are put together to be able to. Uh, start production early March. So, like I said again, uh, this man, 95 years old, is not just thinking about today, he's already thinking about future. Before anybody thought about pharmaceutical independence in Nigeria, he had that vision and he's also pursuing it big time. Okay, uh, pretty exciting there. And, uh, you know, the question here would be in what format is this herbal cure, I mean, medicine coming through? You have said that. You know, it's not just. Uh, not Thank you very much. In what format uh, so is many, that going to so come many, through? Uh, and so also, many of this. Okay. Uh, so it's a two-in-one question. Uh, the first mm. is, in what format is this herbal drug going to come through? The and, you know, the second question would be, uh, are there challenges? I mean, in the cost of coming through with this herbal medicine and drug for COVID-19, were there challenges that you were faced with? Okay. Um, first, we had discussions around the, the dosage format yesterday at the meeting with NIMA. Within Nigeria, I think that it's going to be a syrup, a 100 mil bottle syrup. That's what it's going to be. But in terms of being able to ship outside Nigeria, because I think the world needs us now. So I think syrup might not really be workable uh, around that. So we probably have to also be looking at uh, tableting these... Uh, uh, formulation. So these are the two that I'm looking at right now. There could be more. Of course, that will be left for pharmacist Apolabi, the team lead in the pharmaceutical production, to figure out. I'm just a basic um, biomedical researcher. We have a lot of people who are working on this. In my team alone, we have more than 10 people, brilliant, young, you know, West-trained scientists who can think through all of this within the university. Okay? Then, the second question is what again? The second question is, in the course of coming through with this uh, herbal medicine to combat uh, COVID-19, uh, what are the challenges that you and the institution uh, would have encountered or have encountered? I, I think the first challenge we had was funding. Like, personally, I thought it was funding. But you have a lot of, just like broke banks, you know, to fund the research. He, he spared nothing. 
But eventually, when the success came, uh, people are now here trying to assist in one way or the other. And apart from that, I don't think there's another thing. All the right. regulatory agencies were not also forthcoming. You know, these things with herbal medicine claims, counter claims, and a lot of people had come forth with a lot of things. So, especially the organic COVID or COVID, COVID organics from Madagascar. So, everybody was at some common level of paranoia around all of that. But I think immediately we, we started opening our books and decided seeing what we're doing. They went, they came into our labs, they saw what we were doing, they came to the university, most system hospital, probably one of the best hospitals in, in Nigeria, even in West Africa. They saw what we were doing. They didn't have too much, you know, problem uh, going forward with, with us. And I think uh, we have to give kudos to the DG of NAVDAC because he, he, she should have waited for us to come to her but she reversed the process. She came to us and said, I've been hearing what people are doing. Please open your booth and see what you people are doing. And I can say that she has it on record that this is exactly how this should be done all over the world in terms of how we approached this. So we didn't just make any claim like all the other practitioners would make claim, but we, went, we took it through the rigors of science. And that's exactly why everybody seemed to be on the same page with us. Otherwise, they would have been having press releases saying a lot of other things, you know. Well, let me, let me also quickly ask this, um, you know, and I, I believe it might be one of the fears, you know, that might have crossed your mind. Um, the use of this drug, if it is approved here in Nigeria and in other parts of Africa, and seem to be very effective, saving lives, um, preventing complications of COVID-19 and some of all of that. It kind of, it kind of means killing business for the likes of Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson and, and the, you know, those vaccine you know, makers across the world that are making billions of dollars from, of course, selling their vaccines. So is there a fear yeah. that this might be blocked, Professor uh, Omotui? Yeah, well, of course. Uh, I'm not a businessman. And, but I understand because I run some, you know, uh, shows. So I understand maybe there could be some kind of fear. But let me put this very confidently to you. We are not competing with Pfizer because we can't even compete with them in the first place. We are only offering complementary support. Look at what happened. The reason we got the Omicron in the first place was because the vaccine distribution network broke down at some point that it looks like very rich, high-income countries just blocked everything. Forgetting that an infection in one area of the world is an infection to the entire world. So I think Pfizer, in my opinion, should come to Abuad and see us more as a partner and not like a threat of competitor or competition. We are not threats to them. And that's number one. Number two, what the Pfizer vaccine does it's not exactly what Abuad Virusidin does. The, the Pfizer vaccine in the long run might provide some kind of, you know, immunity uh, for anybody. But when someone is or has contracted COVID-19, Abuad Virusidin should be the stopgap uh, for such people. So that's the reason I will not say if you have the means of taking vaccine, you should not take it. I will not say that. The only fear I have is that the rate at which this uh, mutation is going on, we even make their vaccines less effective. It simply means that what our body is doing right now is actually is going, is, is helping them in their business. Because if we can keep the viral, the, uh, the population with viruses down, their mutation rates will be down and their platform will be effective in the long run. So if I were Pfizer, I would not see me, I would not see Abuad as a competitor, rather as a partner. Because the reason they needed booster dose in the first place is because their vaccines actually got weaker from 87% to 43 or 46%. But with Abbott, we will see it could actually stay at the 87 So it's good enough. So we are not going to drive Pfizer out of business, and Pfizer will also draw, draw, draw the drug out of business. M and B, Pfizer, Merck, they should come to us and say, okay, you have this. We have the platform for global distributorship, we have the, the platform for global production. How can we assist with this? This is a global problem. It doesn't matter where it comes from, whether the university is in uh, uh, Cotonou or the university is in Oxford or the university is in uh, uh, oh. Lister or wherever in the world.
as well, long it, as it, science it, it, is good. It is just a... It's just a concern that I believe, you know, had crossed your mind, you know, and, you know, the, I, I hope, you know, that this goes well, you know, and uh, that the Afe Babalola University and, of course, your team gets the royalties that they deserve from all of this. Um, you know, I'm, I, sure I'm, you, I'm always going to think about, you know, you know, I'm what sure could you possibly not, go wrong. I'm sure you are not unaware Afe Babalola himself is a legal luminary of international refuge. So if uh, so you should know that the issue of royalty will not be a problem. He is a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> but, but let's also, um, you know, quickly as we begin to coast the conversation down now, uh, let's also look at the issue of uh, if your institution or an organization have been able to um, experiment on those who have taken the vaccine, because uh, you were saying rightly here that the herbal drug is a cure and not a vaccine because the vaccine just reduces the severity of, you know, the case. And so... Uh, for those who have been vaccinated, can they also take the drug, the herbal drug? I, I have, very quick one, I, I, I have um, a practical experience with that. This is a person that has taken the jab two times, that's for complete dosage. He's always on his mask, 247. He went with his family to SA and came back and got COVID. All of them were vaccinated and got COVID. It was Verosidin that killed him. Okay. Two of them, his son and himself. In fact, and that was one of the things that I loved most. When he, when he reached out to us and he said, give us two bottles of Verosidin, he gave to his son, he took his own. He didn't take his, I think it was on the normal cocktail that they were giving to them in the hospital while the son was taking Verosidin. After four days, they went back to test. His son tested negative, he tested positive. Then he, he called and he said, I didn't take mine. Now I want to take my time and take mine. After the after going through the uh, the full regimen, he went back to test for testing rather, and he came back negative. Okay, um, <laughs> good thing that we have you know your contact you know just in case we also need to <laughs> <laughs> through the back door you know get our own. You don't have you to know. go to the back door. <laughs> the last door is open to everybody. Just in case I need to get my own little <laughs> syrup in my jacket pockets you know uh, th you really thank god that we've uh, really. <laughs> we have your your contact and we'll be reaching out to you um finally in 20 seconds if you can um is there any clarity on whether this has side effects can people with high blood pressure can people with you know with a diabetes and some of all of that still use this medicine um is there clarity on some of all those aspects let me quickly let me quickly tell you one secret please don't tell it to anybody the same components that is actually doing the anti mpro 2 inhibition in COVID and in Virusidin has one of the most potent anti hyperglycemic effects. That is to say, it has the capacity to reduce your blood sugar. Oh, okay. Great way to end the conversation. Dr. Omotui, um, or Professor, I beg your pardon, Professor Lakwasi Omotui, is a director <laughs> of research at the Afa Babalala University. I lo I'm looking forward to speaking with you again. And uh, we Thank hope that much. this actually, you know, becomes a worldwide cure for COVID-19, um, not just here in Nigeria. Um, thank you for the work that you've done so far. We look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, President Mohamed Obari was on an interview yesterday evening and, of course, uh, spoke extensively on certain core issues uh, bothering Nigeria as a country. We're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the statements and uh, some of the things that uh, he spoke on yesterday, right next after the short break. <laughs>